You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello, listeners out there in the world. How are you? I hope you're okay. What a weird time this is on planet Earth. Here is my second episode about the coronavirus, which is currently sweeping across the globe in fairly dramatic fashion. This one is an episode of the Rick Thompson Report on Luke's English Podcast. And this is where I talk to my dad, who is a semi-retired journalist about current affairs and politics. Obviously, the big story at this moment is the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. So let's hear what my dad has to say about this. As I've said, this is the second episode I've done on the subject. Yesterday, I uploaded an episode which covers some of the key vocabulary relating to this issue. So if you'd like to know some more specific words and phrases that will help you talk about this topic, then go back and listen to episode 652. Listening to that first should help you understand this conversation better. And the idea is that getting specific teaching from me and then just listening to a conversation about it, you'll be better equipped with the right language for your own conversations in English about this topic. There's also another episode in the archive, by the way, which is all about vocabulary and phrasal verbs for feeling ill. And that covers all stuff like all of the symptoms and common symptoms and names of like things that you might experience if you're feeling ill. And that is episode 40, uh, recorded, whoa, when was that? At least 10 years ago. But I think it's a good one. I spent lots of time listing vocab for describing physical conditions. So anyway, two episodes with specific explanations of high frequency vocabulary on the coronavirus and on feeling ill in general. The first one being episode 40, which was called um, health slash feeling ill phrasal verbs and expressions. And then yesterday's episode number 651, which was called coronavirus COVID-19 vocabulary. So I'm talking to my dad then in this episode of the Rick Thompson Report. And neither of us are experts on this subject, of course, but my dad does his best to try and stay informed about things like this. And my listeners often comment that they appreciate the way, the clear way that he describes what's going on. Our conversation in this episode focuses mainly on what's happening in the UK at the moment, how serious this pandemic is, what the consequences might be, and how the UK's government is responding to it. Just before we start, I'd like to give you a quick reminder of just two words. That is a cold, a cold and uh, the flu. Okay, a cold and the flu. I just want to clarify what these things are specifically. So a cold or the common cold is what we call a mild virus that people typically catch during the winter. It's not very serious. It's just annoying, really, if you have a cold. Having a cold usually means having a sore throat, uh, a bit of a cough, (coughs) perhaps a headache or a runny nose. But you can still usually work or do the things that you usually do, even if you feel a bit run down. So that's a cold. And we say to have a cold or to have got a cold or to catch a cold. When you refer to in, in the case of to catch a cold, that is when you refer to the moment that you become infected. So, for example, you could say, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm, I've got a cold. I don't want to go out today. I've got a cold. I've caught a cold. Or maybe even I'm coming down with a cold, which means I'm starting to get a cold. Or I'm getting over a cold, which means I'm recovering from a cold. So that's a cold. Not very serious but very common. And it's weird because normally cold is an adjective, isn't it? Oh, I feel cold. It's cold in this room, but it's also a noun, meaning that kind of low level, not very serious virus that a lot of people get at various times during the year. So I've got a bit of a cold at the moment. Sorry. So that's a cold. And then there's the flu, uh, the full name being influenza, which is also uh, very common, but much worse because it usually knocks you off your feet. So if you have the flu, and it's the flu, notice that, a cold, but the flu. So if you have the flu, you'll probably have to stay at home, probably stay in bed for several days. The flu gives you much stronger symptoms, like a very bad cough, 
a high temperature, aches and pains in your body, weakness, very sore throat, and sometimes diarrhea. And you might say, I've got the flu, or I've caught the flu, or I'm coming down with the flu, or even also I'm getting over the flu, meaning I'm recovering from it. So that's the flu more serious than having a cold. Now, I just wanted to clarify those things because in my experience, there's always some uncertainty from learners of English about the exact difference between a cold and the flu. And they are words that come up in this conversation. But I mean, now we're dealing with a third thing, which is coronavirus. And it's, you know, slightly different in the way that um, it's affecting people and in the way that the world is responding to it. So anyway, a cold, the the flu, and then obviously COVID-19 in this case. All right, so I will talk to you again at the end of the episode, but now let's talk to my dad, and here we go. This is the Rick Thompson Report with Rick Thompson. Hello, Dad. Hello, Luke. Well, how are you? Well, I'm, <laughs> I hope I'm all right at the moment. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, uh, but uh, obviously, we're uh, facing a crazy time. We've got, uh, I don't know how long ahead of us with um, all sorts of disruption to normal life. Uh, yes, we su- have. Suddenly, life is, is no longer normal anymore. And uh, the most immediate thing for us is the fact that, uh, yeah, the, the, the daycare centre is going to be closed. So um, we will be looking after our daughter, which is uh, lovely. But at the same time, we're thinking, oh, my God, what are we going to do? How are we going to keep her entertained? What are we going to do every day? Where can yes, we go? Uh, you know, At least you don't have to go to work. You could both essentially, apart from you going into the, the uh, British Council, you can both work from home to a certain extent so presumably you can do it caring for your little daughter in in shifts yeah exactly we're going to share the duties and we'll be doing lots of art projects at home and uh, very good well it is going to be hugely disruptive around the world and um, I take the view that it is extraordinarily serious some people are comparing it with the great flu epidemic of 1918 1919 mm. the end of the first world war there was a huge epidemic uh, which killed loads of people some say it killed more than died in the first world war yeah it's incredible uh, but si- since then there hasn't been one that is as serious as this even though we've had other virus outbreaks like sars and bird flu and swine flu this one is an, of a different order it's much more contagious and the death rate is much higher and it's spreading all over the world. So it's a very serious situation. It might not be clear to everyone why this is different and why uh, the world is reacting in the way that it is and why uh, the, the press is um, is being sort of dramatic about it. Uh, it I'm, I'm not sure that it's really dramatic. It's probably I, I don't accurate. think the, the press in this country has been particularly dramatizing it i I think um we've got a reputation for having sensationalist popular newspapers and everything but so far uh, they've been pretty factual um you know there haven't been screaming headlines or you're all gonna die i mean the 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 they i think they've been really decent so far but of course there's um a lot of uh, speculation about how serious it'll be how long it'll go on what the effects will be and what's the right action to take and uh, there are some differences there, quite interesting ones. So so here in Warwick, we don't know whether we've got any cases right here. We know in the region we've got about, uh, you know, 40 or 50. And the local hospital is preparing by opening up more beds because there will come a time when there'll be a lot more cases who are so serious they have to go into hospital. Was it What day is it today? Friday. Yeah. Two days ago, I went to help with a volunteer sort of session at the town council where they have a, a speaker and a quiz and tea and cake for people who come in. And this happens once a month. And it went ahead as usual on Wednesday. And, and all these generally, uh, generally elderly people happily came in and sat next to each other and uh, had their tea and everything else. I think there are about 60 or 70 of them. And I talked to a few of them and and there was a general view that, well, it it doesn't seem to have had any effect here. And do you think it'll it'll come to Warwick 
one of them said to me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, it's, it's like having the flu, isn't it? So there's a lot of complacency amongst at least that generation of people. I have to say that these gatherings have now been cancelled for next month, mm. quite rightly, and a lot more restrictions are coming in on, on not having meetings that aren't essential. Yes, I think there is a lot of complacency, but it isn't like the flu. I mean, it really isn't. This is a much more aggressive virus, which hasn't been seen before. There's no vaccine against it. There's no treatment for it. And uh, as we've seen, it is causing quite a high death rate. Uh, The general idea is that it's maybe between 3% and 5%, but it's difficult to say because the official figures, the known cases, are thought to be a, a big underestimate. So you don't know how how what percentage of people will actually die if they catch it. But it's um, if you have a million people catching it, and it's two uh, percent, well, everybody out there can do their maths. I mean, it's going to be very damaging. Yeah. So the question that I've got here is basically, what is all the fuss about? I think you may have answered that. Yes. I mean, I think some people are thinking that but it's it all the facts are that uh, this is going to be really bad and and it's going to sort of go for months we're waiting for a huge spike in cases because it's quite clear that we are about two weeks behind italy and about one week behind spain and you see what's been happening there and despite all the measures you take uh, it's still going to happen so Everyone's kind of getting ready for that and giving the best advice they can. So, um, sorry, so, so we're waiting for our big boost in, in cases. People are saying that there's not really that much that you can do, that the virus is going to spread in any case. Even if everyone stays at home, it's, it's still going to somehow spread. But it's a question of whether it spreads quickly or whether it spreads slowly. it's a very difficult one for us non-experts to know who's right because the experts aren't in total agreement if you look at china where it started and they had this huge surge in cases i mean i think they had more than eighty thousand cases registered that's known Mm. and over three thousand people died and they had this, you know, incredible lockdown and severe measures, which the Chinese can do because they, they can simply say this is going to happen and it will happen. And according to the latest figures, their number of new cases has dropped right down. Assuming that they're being on open and honest about it, it, it may therefore appear that their lockdown of Wuhan province and strict measures on travel and and everything else seem to have um, contained it. On the other hand, here in the UK, the government uh, has decided not to close the schools, not to take any drastic action and seal the borders and stop flights and everything else. And uh, some people are accusing them of being indecisive and putting the economy ahead of health. Yeah. But it's, um, it's very interesting to listen to the scientific advisors. Boris Johnson appears every couple of days for a, for a news conference, and he has on one side of him the medical officer, the senior medical officer of health, and the other one is the chief scientific advisor. These people are not politicians, and they are trying to give the best advice. Uh, and they're backed up by a team of other experts there was one who was on bbc television last night called professor graham medley and he really is an expert he's um professor of infectious disease modeling at london school of hygiene and tropical medicine uh, yeah so he looks at the statistics he's also a professor here at warwick university and uh, he was saying how it's certain that the majority of people will get this yeah a lot of people will not even know they've got it, but a lot of people will have like a cold uh, symptoms. Some will get flu-like symptoms where they might get a nasty high temperature. But he says that the the modelling says that with this new and dangerous virus, the community ought to develop what's called herd immunity. Oh, okay. Herd immunity is a rather strange phrase. A herd is normally a group of cattle. Cows. But he, he's cows. He's talking about people here in groups. Yeah. Herd immunity is basically that if everybody 
gets it over a period of time, they all then develop immunity. So they can't get it again. And he says there's every chance that this virus will make a comeback next winter. So it, we may as well just try and manage the fact that people are going to get it rather than try and stop them getting it, which he thinks is pretty well impossible. So the, the we have not closed the schools. They have in France, they have in Linda in Germany, they have in a lot of other countries. And people say, why haven't you closed the schools? Well, it's a very interesting one, because if the kids aren't going to school, where are they going to be? And it seems that transmission of the virus within the home is quite likely. If one person in a house gets it, then everybody else is likely to get it. What Graham Medley said on Newsnight yesterday was, yeah, that uh, naturally in periods of isolation, everyone wants to go home, everyone goes home, and then they, they see the family. They may even take the kids to the grandparents so the grandparents can look after the kids. And then it's older people who are being exposed to it, which is exactly the thing that uh, we're trying to prevent. So yes, this we- virus doesn't seem to affect children very much. They've got really good immune systems. As you get older, your immune system gets weaker. And the kids are therefore kind of carriers. And um, obviously, if this goes on for months, you close the schools, you can't open them again after a few weeks with this virus raging. So they might be off school for months. So, uh, you know, will that do the job? Will it somehow help to contain it or will it not? And um, the scientific advisors here in the UK are saying it might do more harm than good. So interesting, isn't it, that the expert, I mean, obviously, The other countries are taking expert advice as well, but they've come to a different conclusion. We don't know which is the right one, but at the moment in the UK, it's trying to slow down the progress of the virus, not contain it. It's not containable, really. It's got to be slowed. And the reason it's got to be slowed is that, of course, the health service is going to be in the front line. They will have more of their staff falling ill, but also there isn't the capacity to to have lots and lots of people with serious breathing difficulties coming into hospitals where they have to have special beds and they have to have oxygen supplies so they're they're you know busily trying to extend their intensive care units ready for when uh, more and more people come in seriously ill that's another reason why you're slowing it down slow it down so you can get ready i see Hmm. isn't interesting isn't it, it is. i mean the the, the I, I was wondering about russia is this great big country and they've got only a few declared cases i think 34 as i speak which is pretty remarkable now of course cynical people will say russia's never been truthful about public information uh, and they don't have a very good record of being very open but the fact is they're busily building a new hospital like they did in china uh just outside moscow they're they're hastily building a new hospital there are pictures of it online um they know it's going to affect them they know it's going to be bad so a lot of the, this preparation is preparing for the worst and uh, i think they think it will be bad the other effects of course luke are about the economic effects i mean what can i say can i just before uh, you go into that i just yes. want to just to be clear what it's going to be bad really means it's it's a bit tough isn't it really to say because it you don't want to sound unsympathetic and you don't want to be shocking but ultimately what this means is that okay most people who get it won't won't die but uh it's the people who are weak who are who are already sick who are elderly who are at risk and so that sort of three to five percent could be more could be less is probably just a section of society so when we say it's going to be bad on one hand we mean that yes some people are going to die as a result of this but also it's going to put a lot of strain on the national health service because people who are sick with this will naturally want to be you know they'll they'll want to go to a hospital and the health service won't be able to deal with it. So when we say bad, it means people will be suffering um, either in their homes or suffering in hospitals that are not equipped to give them the care that they need. So people are going to suffer the other another reason why it could be bad is just because of the yeah the disruption that will happen and how that's going to affect the economy so now that's we can it, talk that about is right when, when i say i think it's going to be very bad and i'm not a scientist i'm a journalist but i look at all the information 
I think it is going to be extraordinarily serious this year. And it's those two things that a lot of elderly and more vulnerable and people with underlying health conditions uh, won't get through it. And so there will be a number of people who will die before their time. And then we, um, you know, then we get the mental health issues that arise when we lose loved ones, the grief that will be experienced by many people. And that's no, that will affect life uh, in a very sort of powerful way. Yes, it yeah. will. And, and uh, of course, there's worry as well. A lot of people will, you know, as it progresses, they'll get more and more concerned. Um, and there's a social impact, uh, the social impacts of not being able to go out. Uh, you know, will there be panic buying so that certain shops don't have essential things? And the big impact, of course, on leisure and everything – People aren't going to be going on holiday abroad. All the football matches and other things will be cancelled. So it'll be a strange kind of lockdown, which could be, as you say, very depressing for a lot of people. Whether they'll continue to go down the pub in the UK or go to a bar in Paris and have a drink, um, I'm not sure. At the moment here, it's just like life is normal. Yeah, how Absolutely. the supermarket? How the supermarkets? Oh, they, they've had some uh, uh, stocking up things that you, you can't get hand gel anywhere because they or that disappeared off the shelves uh, a few weeks ago and for some reason people have been buying toilet roll in huge <laughs> quantities and i can't well, i can't understand I that can. to be honest <laughs> I can. if you think you're going to be locked in your your home for a month maybe that's the bottom <laughs> thing you want well it's like i said in the previous <laughs> episode you know what's worse like the zombie apocalypse or when you're sitting on the toilet and you realise that there's no toilet paper left. Ah! You know, that, that yes. is one of the worst things. Um, but, yeah, people are, yeah, for some reason, buying but lots of but toilet I, paper. It's, but it's, in, in most places, it's, um, it's not, nothing too bad. People talk about panic buying. Uh, well, I, I haven't witnessed any panic buying. I think people have certainly stocked up and people have apparently, you know, decided that there are certain things they want to have in the house in case they can't go out for a while, like like packets of pasta and things that will keep, long life milk, things like that. But it, but it's um, it's been quite reasonable here. The guidance that uh, w- was issued yesterday by the government, by the Johnson and his two main scientific advisors changed slightly in that if you have any kind of symptoms of a cold or a cough, then they're saying stay at home for a week. Self-isolate. Yes, self-isolate. So uh, that's a slight change. But they haven't banned big sporting events. Today is the big horse race, the Cheltenham Gold Cup, and there's about 20,000 people at the race course. But the Football Association here has just announced that they are going to postpone um, next week's Premier League games. Until April. Yep. And UEFA, the uh, European Football Authority, has postponed all Champions League and Europa League matches next week. And they'll, they're will they thinking. And the Bundesliga in Germany has been suspended. So a, a lot of... Uh, countries are saying uh, mass gatherings is, a, is going to be, if you like, banned. Here in Scotland, where they have some devolved powers, the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, announced yesterday that they would ban or at least disapprove of any gatherings of more than 500 people. Okay, It's difficult to say why 500, why not 300, why not 800, but uh, they're trying to reduce the large gatherings so that that's what's going on here luke the the impact you mentioned about the the economic shock well when i say it's going to be bad i'm including that yes obviously the stock markets are are going haywire at the moment the stocks and shares have dropped like a stone and that affects a lot of things it affects uh, pension funds and mm. savings and all sorts of things but also investment in business i've heard sorry that it's equivalent to if not worse than the financial crisis we had uh, 10 years ago it's looking like it yes 2008 12 years ago 12 years when ago. when uh, uh, there was a, a the banking collapses when uh, there was a kind of domino effect 
Uh, you might have to explain a domino effect mm. where the banks all kind of fell over and realized they hadn't not got enough cash to meet their obligations. And all the governments had to quickly uh, promise everybody that, no, your money is safe. You won't lose it all. We are going to bail out the banks with public money. So um, that's what happened. And the result was that the governments hadn't got enough money to spend on public services. So we went into the austerity period where they had to try and get their finances back on track. Well, the situation now looks the same. Uh, they, they are going to have to throw money at this, our money, taxpayers' money. Two days ago, our new Chancellor of the Exchequer announced that uh, he was putting aside £12 billion pounds uh, euros, if you like, because the values are much the same. Twelve billion pounds, five billion to support the national health service, and seven billion to support businesses that might be suffering immediately. That's um, you know a thousand million pounds, and it's the same kind of amount as they used to bail out the banks in two thousand and eight. One difference is the interest rates are now rock bottom. So if the government is going to borrow money on the markets, then this is as good a time to do it as any. But the impact economically, we're just kind of getting the idea that if airlines go bust, if holiday firms go bust, if little businesses uh, go bust because half their workers can't come into work or they can't get their supplies or whatever, how on earth is the government going to protect them? It probably can't, but it'll have to pay out more in social security benefits for people who are thrown out of work. So the amount of money we throw at this will probably be an awful lot, and it'll be the same everywhere else. Ah, okay. Fantastic, he said. Yes, it's, so- I mean, I'm sorry to be so gloomy, but that, that's my view. I think it's going to be a very serious year, and we have to brace ourselves. As for what people do, well, you've been telling them, Luke, in the last episode. Yeah. Um, this thing about washing hands, by the way, I think you said <laughs> wash it for 20 minutes. Yeah, that was a mistake. No, no, that, 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 20 wait, seconds. That was a mistake. That was obviously a, a, slip, of, a slip of the tongue. <laughs> it was a slip of I the tongue. I said 20 minutes. I'm sure. <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm sure that everyone um, knew that I meant 20 seconds. I'm sure they did. I don't think people washed their hands for 20 minutes. Uh, it, the the, um, the your, your instructions on washing hands was, was great, trying to get every single bit of your hands covered with soap. It's uh, interesting, this thing about soap. Did you talk about soap? Why soap is so important? Soap versus uh, uh, hand gel, hand sanitizer. I didn't actually. I didn't talk about uh, why uh, soap is a good way to wash your hands and a good way to protect yourself from the virus. Well, go I, ahead. We, we've we've been getting some advice on that. It's quite interesting. I mean, I wrote down what they what they said. This virus is a self assembled nanoparticle. Wow. Nano means very very small, in which the weakest link is the lipid or fatty layer okay now soap dissolves the fat membrane and the virus essentially falls apart it does work with uh, you know alcohol based uh, hand gel but not not as well as with soap soap's the best yeah it contains something called amphiphiles amphiphiles or something which is what breaks down the the coating on the virus so washing your hands with soap is the best thing you can do to to keep the virus off your hands. And uh, the, your 20 seconds, they've said it's like singing happy birthday twice. Uh, so we could do that now, Luke. Um, <laughs> Wait. It's Candy Statton's birthday today. Who's Candy Statton? She was an American singer. She had a big hit called Young Hearts. Is that Run it? Free. It's got to be someone else's birthday. Is that the best you can ne- do? Neil Sedaka. Neil Sedaka, um, Carol, he wrote Carol, didn't he? Um, yes. Oh, Carol, don't ever give your heart away. Uh, wait a minute. Famous birthdays. No, no, no. Is that it? Is that really the best? Well, I didn't find any others. I haven't been looking very hard. It's Friday the 13th today, isn't it? It is Friday the 13th. Uh, 13th of March. Hold on a minute. I've got to find someone else. Um, well, I while don't... you're doing that, I'm going to start washing my hands here. <laughs> and it goes, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Neil Sedaka. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday, Candy Stanton. Happy birthday to you. And that's 20 seconds. I can't find anyone else better than those people. <laughs> Very. I'm just trying... Uh, hold on a minute. There's got to be some actor or someone that well, everyone... Uh, Pe- uh, Peaches Geldof, uh, Bob Geldof's daughter. Uh, not famous enough. Not famous enough. Um, uh, I'm struggling anyway, to find I've, anyone. I know I've done my hand-washing routine and um, it's quite useful, you know, because 20 seconds is... Slightly longer time than you'd think. I've got one, Dad. Lee Jung Hyun, South Korean oh. pop singer, K-pop star. Lee Jung Hyun, happy birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday, birthday to, you. to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday Lee Jung Hyun. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Twice. Twice. Yeah. All right. Well, we got the message anyway that washing your hands regularly is a good idea. We, we, here we do it every time we come in. So once we've been out, we come in, the first thing we do is do the 20 second hand wash job with soap. And I think that that, you know, obviously protects you as well as anything. Wearing masks, as you talked about in your previous episode, nobody around here is wearing masks. And, and the science is very dubious about whether it does, it, it does anything or not. I think the thing about masks is that basically masks can help prevent you spreading it or you giving it to others it doesn't protect you from that's it. right yes if you if you have a cough and have a little sneeze in your ma- mask obviously it's not going to spray about so much talking about hand washing you, you mentioned a paper towel and and throw it away that's a good idea a lot of toilets have these fan uh, dryers hand dryers yeah these ones that go yeah it appears that these are not a good idea because really? if there are any traces of virus on your hands when you when you dry your hands, it shoots them all over over the room. <laughs> uh, so the the experts are saying no, a hand towel is much better. It's a pity though, isn't it, that we're all going to be using a lot more paper, just throwing paper away. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, okay. Um, all right then, Dad. Well, I don't know what else we can say really without this going on for a very long time. But um... no, I think obviously everybody must be watching the news and and taking the advice. Um, it's um, in Europe. We haven't seen the worst of it yet by a long chalk. And then what the economic impacts are going to be will will take you know many many months to to emerge. But it's quite interesting that uh, here in the UK, at the moment, they're taking it slowly and not closing the schools and not banning gatherings. There must be critics of this approach, though, Dad. There must be people cr- criticising Boris Johnson for th- this approach, because this is not the same approach that's being taken in the rest of uh, Europe or in, even in China and Korea and places like that. So people must be saying, people must be kind of, getting quite upset about him saying why yes, aren't you, is... why aren't you applying more strict measures to deal with this yes there there is uh, criticism yes there, there's um, a former conservative minister called Rory Stewart who's being very vocal and saying that Johnson is um, sidestepping difficult decisions and we ought to act much more decisively and do it now what are we waiting for that kind of thing and on twitter there's a lot of people saying much the same kind of thing. Why Why aren't we acting more decisively? It looks to me that it's not a political decision. It looks to me like it's a science decision, that they've decided that closing the schools might do more harm than good, and um, they are taking it day by day and step by step in the hope that the spread of the virus will be slow. It's a bit of a political decision too, though. It's, it might be, It's also yeah. a bit of an economic decision as well because they, because Boris is going, well, you know, we can't um, uh, close the schools. We can't uh, have too much disruption because uh, uh, money. Uh, well, he hasn't said that, but, no, but obviously I, um, if you were the prime minister, you'd be looking at the harm to the nation of this course of action or that course of action. And... Um, it's a difficult one, isn't it? If yeah. you're if you're going to, in many ways, wreck a lot of people's economies, uh, businesses, and so on. If you if you do something too prematurely, it doesn't actually have much of an effect. Yeah. So um, I'm no fan of Boris Johnson, but I don't think that he's doing this on his own. I think that uh, he's not he's not Trump. He doesn't make off the cuff announcements in the middle of the night. The speech. Uh, he suddenly produced 
from the Oval Office yesterday where Trump, he said, Trump. It's, all, it's all Trump, it's all Europe's fault and we're <laughs> banning all travel from Europe, <laughs> apart from Britain and Ireland, where he happens to have Trump hotels and golf courses, incidentally, without consulting his his colleagues, his allies, in any way at all whatsoever. Really? And it's been described as the most expensive speech ever delivered. Wow. You know, as a result, the stock markets went crazy. And um, so, wait a minute. He made this. His, he, 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 he announced it, it last uh, in the middle of the night, our time. We woke up this morning to hear that he'd done this televised thing from the Oval Office saying, "We're well, banning travel from Europe." So he made it. He announced a travel ban without consulting his advisors. Absolutely. Well, he didn't consult Germany, France, Britain, or anybody else. The EU. Right, he didn't okay. consult the airlines. What I'm saying is, Boris Johnson is not. Donald Trump. So it's, um, you, I'm not a fan of Boris Johnson at all, but I don't. I don't think you can at this point say that he's um, acting as a as a sort of crazed dictator. So, uh, he's not. So he's not making a un, he's not making unilateral decisions. Certainly not. I uh, think that yeah. they've got. They have a, a committee called the COBRA Committee. It's an acronym. I can't remember what it stands for. Sounds nice, though, doesn't it? It's the name of a snake. COBRA. The COBRA Committee. It's, a, it's an emergency committee. It's a committee it that gets It is an emergency to, committee. Yeah. When there's a crisis, COBRA get together to sort out the crisis. Yeah. Well, the, these, these top scientists are, you know, in the COBRA Committee, which is meeting every two or three days, and, uh, you know, along with ministers, and I think that they they look at the facts and try and come to a decision which they think is most sensible. So they're not doing it kind of just knee jerk, as we say, reaction. Yes. Um, so I hope I haven't depressed all your listeners. Uh, they're probably <laughs> depressed already. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I- it's, South Korea has got eight thousand cases, but it doesn't have a, a particularly high number of people who've who've died. Maybe because I've got a good healthcare system, I, I don't know, but. Um, with Europe is is bracing itself for a big increase in cases. What can I say? Stay in, read books, listen to podcasts, and keep your chin up. Yeah, that's one thing people can do is listen to Luke's English podcast. And if they <laughs> want to improve their English, what better way of doing it? Exactly. The conditions are perfect for doing a bit of <laughs> yes, self, self-study, self-study of English. It'll be interesting to see how people react to this and how, how people become resourceful and how people find ways to uh, adapt to these changing s- scenarios. People are inventive and it'll be interesting to see what people come up with. Yeah, okay, that- well, that, that's the scene at this moment on Friday, the 13th of March. Yep. And uh, no doubt we'll, we'll see how it develops in the coming weeks. Yes, thank you for talking to us on the podcast, Dad. Can I just say on behalf of my listeners, um, thank you. And um, they enjoy listening to you. Uh, well, I hope so. <laughs> I've depressed everybody too much. Wow. And, uh, and good luck. And I hope uh, things uh, over there in, in Paris aren't too difficult for you. We will see. The, the sun's shining today, lovely blue sky, and that, that helps a little bit. Well, that's you know? one thing I, you know, we can do. We, I've got, we're close to the countryside here, so we can go for nice walks in the country if the weather's good. So we'll probably be doing that quite a bit more. Yeah, maybe, um, maybe what uh, the three of us will do here, we might even sort of try and book ourselves into some nice little house in the countryside for a week in April for the Easter holidays and just kind of like get away from it all. Yeah, we will that see. would be nice. Would be very nice. Bit of fresh air and no contact with uh, with lots of people. Yeah. All right then, Dad. Well, uh, have a good afternoon. And um, I'm now going to edit all this together and publish it as soon as possible. Okay. All right then. Um, good Okay. Well, good. Speak to you again soon. Yeah, speak to you again soon. Okay. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right, so there we go. Thank you again to Dad for his contribution. I wonder what you think of the UK's position on this whole thing. I expect that some people will definitely disagree with the apparently casual approach that the government is taking. It, um, is, it, is it irresponsible not to close the schools and put the country on lockdown? Is it possible to really stop the virus from spreading? Is it better to let the population get exposed to the virus in order to create herd immunity? Or is that just irresponsible because, you know, people will people will die as a result? Um, is this, you know, what, why is the government doing this? Is it because of economic reasons? Are they putting the economy before 
uh, public health and the suffering of, of, of weaker people. Is it realistic to imagine that putting everyone in isolation will actually curb this? I don't know all the answers, but I'm curious to read comments from people in different countries. So what's going on where you are? How is your country responding to this? Get in touch, leave a comment on the website. Where are you? In which country do you live? What's the situation there? What are people doing and saying? So this is all pretty weird, isn't it? It's a very weird time. 2020 is turning out to be a pretty weird year. It's like something out of a film. The whole world is facing this situation and it is really impacting on our daily lives already. Speaking for myself, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know how long this is going to go on. I don't know the extent to which the country where I live will be on lockdown. And as a result, I don't know how the podcast will be affected. In terms of LEP Premium, as I said previously, there is a new series coming very soon. And I just have to put the finishing touches to it before publishing it as soon as possible. So I think you'll get premium number 21 part one coming within a couple of days and the other episodes coming after that. Uh, The series premium 21 is about common errors. Uh, This first one dealing specifically with linking words of contrast, words like despite, um, in spite of and although plus some spelling and pronunciation of tricky words. To sign up to LEP Premium in order to hear all of the episodes, and there are over 60 premium episodes now, go to teacherluke.co.uk slash premium to sign up. And there are worse ways to spend your time during this situation than using my content to really push your English. In a weird way, in terms of learning English, as, as, as I said to my dad earlier this is not necessarily bad if you you know if you're able to stay in and um just focus on self-studying doing lots of reading doing lots of listening of podcasts and stuff could be a good opportunity to work on your english anyway but in you know more seriously my thoughts go out to you if you are directly affected by this if you are you know maybe suffering or if you know someone who's suffering from it my, my thoughts go out to you So what more can I say at this point than just keep calm and carry on? I don't know if I will be referring to this again in future episodes. This isn't the coronavirus podcast. Uh, So in future episodes, it'll probably just be business as usual. I don't know if I'll be constantly sort of talking about the virus and, oh, what about this? Even though it's on everyone's minds, I think it's just going to be business as usual for future upcoming episodes of the podcast as long as I actually manage to get the time to produce more content. I might be spending all my time just hanging out with my daughter, keeping her busy. And maybe when she's, you know, when I'm not looking after her, maybe I'll be exhausted and just collapsed on the sofa or something. I don't know. We will see. But as I said, leave your comments on the website and I will speak to you soon. First in a premium episode and then in other episodes of Luke's English Podcast, which are yet to be decided slash recorded. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you again to my dad. I'll speak to you again next time. But for now, it's just time to say take care and goodbye. Bye, 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 bye. Thanks for listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk.